Greetings and welcome to part two of lecture 5.2, more on factoring trinomials. Let's look at an example. A ball is tossed into the air with an upward velocity of 16 feet per second from the top of a building that is 32 feet high. The equation that gives us the height of the ball at any time in seconds t is h equals 32 plus 16t minus 16t squared. So let's factor it and then after we factor it let's plug in a value for t and to see what the height of the ball is. So I just want to factor, <clears throat> pardon me, the right hand side. So h will equal, what is my greatest common factor? Looks like a 16 can come out of there leaving me 2 plus t minus t squared. Now if you don't like the way that it looks where it's the opposite way of how we've been looking at it, you can rewrite it, but if you just take it as is, I'm looking for really uh, two numbers that multiply to negative 1 and two numbers that multiply to 2, but their sum is positive t. That could be pretty confusing. So I'm even going to do a little middle trick. And the middle trick I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative. A negative 16. If I take a negative from a positive, that would leave me a negative 2. Take a negative from a positive, that's negative t. A negative from a negative leaves me a positive t squared. Now I'm going to rewrite it in an order that makes sense to me. t squared minus t minus 2. Now this is a problem that becomes more simple because I have my t squared in front. And if I have my t squared in front, then this becomes what two numbers multiply to negative 2 but add to negative 1. So h equals negative 16 t times something t Two numbers, negative two, uh, negative two, and positive one. So I know the negatives on the two because my middle term is negative. But I really kind of don't want that negative hanging out front. It's okay if you want it out front, you can. Otherwise, I can distribute it back into one of these terms. But I'm going to leave it as is because we're just solving for t. So when when t equals 2, our equation becomes h is negative 16 times 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 2. h equals negative 16 times 3 times 0. But anything times 0 is going to be our height is 0 feet. So if we throw the ball up, two seconds later, it's going to hit the ground. That's all that means. Going back to our factors where the first coefficient of the first term is not a 1 and the last term is not a 1, what we can do is write down every possible factor that it could be, every possible combination of factors that it could be. So. I do have the factors of 4 are 4 and 1 and 2 and 2. The factors of negative 3 are 3 and negative 1 and negative 3 and 1. And remember order matters when we're dealing with negative numbers. So here are some of the possibilities. So I have 4x plus 3 times x minus 1. My middle term is negative x. Now I got really lucky there and it was the very first one that I tried was the actual problem. But look at the other combinations and notice why it matters. If I change the signs, my sign changes. I left the numbers all in their respective places, but I ended up multiplying and I actually got the opposite. So that's a good clue that if by chance you tried 4x minus 3 and x plus 1 
and you got the opposite sign of what you're looking for, just flip the signs and then you'll have your answer. You can also say, hey, 4x plus 1, x minus 3 gave me a negative 11. If I just switch those signs, I'm going to get a positive 11, so I can rule the other one out. So these are things that you'll start to think about in terms of, oh, what can I rule out really quickly and what can I concentrate on? Now 2x plus 3, 2x minus 1, and the x 2x minus 1 times x minus 3, well those are exactly the same. When you have the same first number, you only have to try one set. You don't have to try two sets. So I could rule those out immediately. That's kind of how you can approach these problems because they can get large very quickly. So just kind of think about what you can rule out. Be smart about it. What can I rule out? So anyway, the first possible set that I came across was actually the correct set, so my answer to 4x squared minus x minus 3 will be 4x plus 3 times x minus 1. When I first look at a problem to factor, I do look to see if 1, is there a GCF to make this problem a little less complex? For 12xy cubed plus 10xy squared minus 12y, there is a GCF. And the GCF will be 2y. If I factor out a 2y, that will leave me 6y squared plus 5y minus 6 minus 6. Now here's the thing with 6, or, or any number that has quite a few factors, and we're dealing with negatives as well. This can be a really huge problem if we let it get out of hand. So let's try and use our logic, our math skills, and just be smart about this to try and eliminate a lot of the work. I am going to write out all the factors, factors of 6 and the factors of negative 6. Okay. 6 is my first terms coefficient negative 6 is my last term's coefficient. So the factors of 6 are going to be 6 times a 1, or a 1 times a 6, a 2 times a 3, or a 3 times a 2. Those are all my available factors of 6 as well as the order of the factors. For negative 6, I have 6 times a negative 1, or I have a negative 6 times a positive 1. I have a, a 1 times a negative 6, or I have a negative 1 times a 6. Again, it's just another combination of the factors of 6. I have a 2 times a negative 3, as well as a negative 2 times a 3. I have a 3 times a negative 2, as well as a negative 3 times a 2. Those are all the orders, all the combinations of all the factors of 6. Here's where your training, your math skills are going to come in handy. Ultimately, I'm going to have two terms. There's going to be a something y and a something y and you multiply them together and then you'll get back to the original 6y squared plus 5y minus 6. Now here's the thing. I might be able to rule out all of the 6's. Six, 6 times 1, 6 times negative 1, negative 6, all of those combinations. Here's why. If I have a 6 and a 1, and I have any combination where it is a 1 and a 6, and whatever the sign is, it could be a plus or a minus or a minus and a plus, right? Because they got to be opposite signs because I have a negative hanging out there. Here's what I know. A 6 times a 6 is a 36. A 1 times a 1 is a 1. 
take the difference. That is going to be a plus or a minus 35. I can rule all of those out. Any combination of them, I can rule out. Likewise, if I have a 6y plus or minus 6 and a 1y plus or, or minus or a plus 1, Remember, they're opposite signs, so it would be plus goes with negative, negative goes with plus, or uh, positive, sorry. Here's the reason why. 6 times 1 is 6, minus 6 times 1 is 6, therefore, this is going to be plus or minus, technically, 0. Therefore, I can rule those out immediately. So that eliminated a lot of work. Let's see if I can eliminate any of these other six and ones. Well, in that case, it's either going to be a 2y up here and a 3y, or a 3y and a 2y. And let's just see how six and one falls through. So I either have a plus or minus 6 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 6 plus or min uh, minus or plus, sorry, it's the opposite, 1. Let's see. Well, here's the only reason why I'm checking. A 2 times 1 is a 2, a 6 times a 3 is an 18. Regardless, I have a plus or minus 16. In the other version, I have a 3 and a 12. I have a plus or minus 9. None of those work. If I swapped and said 2y plus or minus 1, 3y plus or minus 6, again, I'm in the same situation where I have a 12 and a 3. That's still going to get me a 9. So I can rule those out. So here's what I just ruled out. Every single one of those. That's what I mean by be smart about it. Look to see what it can't be. Rule those out and then once you've ruled everything out, let's work on the things that it might be. So here's what I know it might be. It might be some combination of 2's and 3's, but I want to be smart about this. I want to take a step back and I need to get a 5. Well, a 3 and a 2 and a 2 and a 3 is a 6 and a 6 and that's not going to work. So it has to be a 3 times a 3 and a 2 times a 2. Why is that? Because 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 2 is 4. The difference of those two numbers is 5. Now I just got to figure out where the negative is. So I know 3 times 3 equals 9, 2 times 2 equals 4, but it is a positive, so the negative has to be on the 4. So one of those 2's has to be negative. That's how I'm going to figure this out. That gets me my positive 5x, or 5y. Here's what it is. It's going to be 2y and I'm in a combination of 3 and 2. I just have to be very careful because it's the 2 that's getting multiplied by the negative 2. That's my internal. My extremes, 3 is getting multiplied by 3. And there's my solution. I know it's a lot of work. I know it's scary. But we could eliminate a lot of this by being clever. So that's it for this lecture. So until next time, be seeing you.